guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa and happy 2021 guys. It kind of feels surreal to be saying that because what was 2020? Where did it go? Who knows? But I have a fun video for us today to kind of ring in the new year and also because I recently did a poll on my Instagram asking you guys what was your favorite books that you read last year or your all-time favorite books and you guys were letting me know and then a lot of you said you'd be interested in knowing mine so I'm just going to be talking to you about the best books that I read in 2020 and I've done this a couple times I think I've done this twice already and I'll usually pick like a top five so I'm going to be picking a top five of the best books that I read last year in 2020 because every year has a silver lining guys and there were some actually good books that I read last year so without further ado let's get into them here are my favorite books of 2020 the top five this was a book that I'm going to be talking about that I was waiting for for a long time so I had a really high expectations and my expectations were actually met and this book is called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and this is by V.E. Schwab. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I gave this book nearly a five stars. I gave it a five stars but then I said it's kind of more like a 4.5 to me and it was only because I had extremely high expectations going into this book. My sisters and I when we found out this book was coming out we were all so excited because because the premise seemed so interesting. It is about this girl who basically gets cursed or blessed, depends on how you look at it, but she was able to sort of live a life forever, never die. The only catch that goes on with it is that nobody will remember her. So as soon as she leaves a room or as soon as they turn around and they look at her again, it's like they instantly forget her. Such an interesting premise, so good. And it's sort of like a historical piece that ends up taking place in like, I think it was the 1700s until present day. So it was also really exciting for that reason as well. Now, I just thought that this book could have been a lot more epic if there were just a few minor changes. I just had a problem with one of the main characters in it. I won't get into it too much because I don't wanna give anything away, but it was just so interesting and essentially how she gets here is that she makes a deal with the devil or a sort of devil-like figure and he I guess curses her in that kind of way but I really loved her relationship with him specifically so that just won me over in terms of the book and it was the kind of book that I didn't want to put down so it was so easy just read chapter after chapter and it sort of jumps in between present day and past and back and forth the only thing is other than what I said I had an issue with one of the characters with Henry wasn't like he could have been a little bit better but another thing that I would have to say was that it sort of did get a little bit repetitive in the fact that she was always forgotten like we got that you know there were plenty of examples and i sort of was like okay get to the point now where is this going but other than that guys it was a fantastic read phenomenal some really good characters that will stick with you long after you read them which is for me why a book is always memorable i'm just going to choose a favorite quote from this book because i love to do that so it kind of gives you a little taste of what you're getting in for okay i'm going to read you guys a quote that i pronounce it loose but a lot of people pronounce it Luke, so I don't know. It's kind of short for Lucifer, so I kept saying loose in my head. So I'm just going to read it that way. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing anything, but this is a little quote that I saved. And now, even if everyone you met remembered, Luce says, I would still know you best. She searches his face. Do I know you? He bows his head over hers. You are the only one who does. Their bodies pressed together, one shape to fit the other perfectly. His shoulder molded to her cheek, his hands molded to her waist, his voice molded to the hollow places in her as he says, I want you. And then again, I have always wanted you. I think you guys know where this is going. <laughs> That's not really a spoiler in any way. So hopefully if you guys are interested in this kind of book, it was definitely a very unique premise and it was actually uniquely told this writer is excellent so i highly recommend this book the invisible life of abby larue and it came out a sort of towards the end of last year so it's a really recent book so definitely a highlight of 2020 was this book the next book also came out in 2020 which is really good so i feel like i'm giving you guys a lot of new books this year that's matt haig and this book is called the midnight library now i'm biased because i really love matt haig i think i've mentioned his books before but if i haven't the humans is one of my favorite all-time books so that's kind of like a bonus one for you guys but i really love this book i gave this a five stars and 
It was just such a magical read. Essentially, I guess similar to the Addie LaRue kind of thing, it's almost about a woman who's sort of lost between worlds, if you will. Basically, the premise is, is that if you're in between sort of life and death, I guess the sort of purgatory realm, there is a place called the library. It even says between life and death, there is a library. And within that library, the shelves go on forever. Every book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived. So I think you can imagine what happens. I won't give anything away even though this happened so soon, but basically in between life and death for this main character, she ends up in this library and she gets to try on every new life that she could have had. So it starts with lives that she could have only imagined of having, like becoming a famous rock star or a life that she maybe thought she almost had, getting together with a person that she left, so on and so forth. So this book is sort of like trying on every life and basically the premise is, is that if she loves one, if she finds herself loving one life, she can actually stay in that life forever if she so chooses. So this is sort of like the purgatory realm where anything can happen. Such a good book, so well written. Matt Haig always writes these just such inspiring, addictive reads and they're just so full of like humanity, if you will. He's just such a great writer. It's just a beautiful moral to the story. So without giving anything away, I'll read you one of my favorite quotes that I wrote down. Life is strange, she said, how we live it all at once in a straight line, but really that's not the whole picture because life isn't simply made of the things we do, but the things we don't do too. And every moment of our life is a kind of turning. So that just gives you an example of the kind of book this is. Such a good read, guys. So if you haven't ever checked out this writer, Matt Haig, I highly recommend doing so. And you're, you're guaranteed to fall in love with this book. It is a really good read. So now I'm going to mix things up a little bit because I haven't really spoken about this kind of genre. And this is almost like a thriller, almost like murder mystery, but also a little bit of a romance in it. And the concept is so good for this book. So the next one I will be talking about is called The One by John Mars. I gave this a four star rating and it was just really, really good. This was sort of like a page turner kind of book. And why I love this a lot was because the chapters were really short. And that is always what gets me personally reading books. When the chapters are short, I keep saying, okay, one more chapter. Okay, one more chapter. Every chapter is sort of like three pages long, four pages long. So before you know it, you find yourself reading like so many pages in one sitting and then you're done the book. And this was that kind of addictive book. Basically, it is about a DNA test matching you with your soulmate. So essentially every single person gets to do this match your DNA and you send in the results. You might hear back or you might not, but if you do, you are matched with your soulmate. So there's only one perfect soulmate made for you and this DNA test will find that soulmate. And this sort of is between five different storylines that are just completely separate, but of course they all go with the theme of match your DNA. So these are all about these DNA matches based on this dating site. It is sort of like a futuristic Bumble or Tinder, if you will. It's really, really interesting. And I think I read that this is going to become a Netflix show and it would be so good. So I highly recommend reading this novel first because like who wants to read a novel after you've seen the movie or show, but this is such a good novel guys, so different. And I'm not typically one to read like thrillers or like murder mystery, whodunit kind of things, but I'm sort of getting into that genre now because it really keeps me reading. So I really, really like this. Um, I'll try to leave you with a quote that I thought I saw was good. Maybe when you took it back to basics, that's what love really was. Just being there for someone when the sun rises and sets. Now, I guess that is a little bit of a more romantic aspect, but there are, of course, romantic storylines in this. And then things get twisted or things are just twisted and then they become romantic. It's just really such a good read takes you on a lot of twists and turns that you might not have expected. So if you're looking for something that's different, that will get your reading, and that is just such a unique storyline, I highly recommend The One by John Mars. It is so good. Speaking of thrillers and things of that realm, I think you can tell that I'm getting more and more into this genre. But the next book is called The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelide. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Michaelides? Hopefully I'm saying that right. But this is The Silent Patient and this actually won the 2019 Goodreads Choice Reading Award. So I might be a little bit late to the party, but not quite, but I gave this book a four stars and this book was so 
Like, speaking of not being able to put things down, I really was like, what is happening? Where is this going? What is going on? When is she going to speak? It was just very, very interesting. And it's basically a sort of, it says, a psychological thriller of a woman's act of violence against her husband and of a therapist obsessed with uncovering her motive. It's so juicy and it was so interesting to read just the fact that this woman completely goes silent after committing this horrific act and then you're kind of left wondering why and trying to piece everything together. And believe me, it's not that graphic or violent or anything like that, so you don't have to be scared about that. It's just a really good read. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm new to the whole mystery thriller genre and I just couldn't put this one down. It was so good and I feel like it did not disappoint. So even sometimes how you're reading these books and then the ending is kind of like, eh, you know, this one was actually really good. So if you guys liked Verity by Colleen Hoover, another really good kind of not being able to put it down sort of thriller in this realm, I would recommend this book, The Silent Patient. It is such a fun read because you kind of are like a detective uncovering the case yourself and you're like, okay, let's read more so I can sort of find out what's happening. And as you pick up clues along the way, you can kind of piece things together. Very, very good. A very great thriller mystery kind of book. And I'm going to sort of recommend this to you guys if you're in a reading rut and you just feel like you're not really inspired to read and you know, you kind of find yourself reading pages but you're not that engaged. This is a very engaging book so I highly recommend it and I'll leave you guys with a quote that I enjoyed from the book. About love, about how we often mistake love for fireworks, for drama and dysfunction, but real love is very quiet, very still. It's boring if seen from the perspective of high drama. Love is deep and calm and constant. I feel like I'm always saving these sort of romantic quotes <laughs> and this book does have a romantic element to it but it's definitely more of a thriller and it's a really really good read so again another favorite of 2020 for myself. So this book isn't new by any means. I believe it came out in 2016 but this was a favorite of mine. I read it last year and then I recommended it well, my sister recommended it to me and then I recommended it to my other sister, but I told her, read it during the holiday season. So like in the autumn, in the winter time, it's so cozy. So I actually think this would be the perfect January read because January kind of is a little bit dull. It's a little bit drab. There's not much going on. You can kind of sort of get into like a little rut, if you will, of like, I don't know, feeling unmotivated or like your life isn't very warm or cozy during this time of year, I would highly recommend this book. And now this is different from the typical fiction books I'm going to be mentioning because this is sort of a book on how to live well. And this is called The Little Book of Hooga or Hooga. <laughs> I recently learned that you pronounce it Hooga, so now I keep saying it like that, but it's spelled Haig. So it's called The Little Book of Hooga, The Danish Way to Live Well by Mike Wiking. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. I of course have everything written for you guys to see. But anyways, I rated this book a five stars because I have to rate books for what they are and I specifically knew that I was going into this book. It wasn't going to be anything mind-blowing but it was supposed to be a really cute uplifting book on teaching you ways in order to live well. I rated this a five stars. It was really closer to like let's say a 4.5 stars but it was such a good book and basically it made me feel like I belong in Denmark. <laughs> specifically Copenhagen. Are any of you guys from Denmark and do any of you guys practice the cozy art of living well Huga, which is basically all about ambiance and just treating your every day like something special. So it's kind of like making the most out of every moment you're in, lighting candles for ambiance, being cozy with like warm blankets, making traditions. It's just such a cute book. It would really be great to read over the holidays as well because it would definitely inspire you. When quarantine is over, I definitely want to go to Denmark probably Copenhagen and just explored a little bit. It just seems so nice. And you sort of learn also in this book about the Danish culture, how they have like a shorter working week and they have a free healthcare and university and education on top of that. They have five weeks of paid holiday per year, etc. So I really feel like they are living well compared to us Canadians or even us Americans, let's say. They're definitely living well. So it was a very inspiring book. I loved it and I really love to learn about new practices and new ways of life, if you will. Maybe it's in my Sagittarius nature, but I just find it fascinating. So I love this book. This is such a cute read, a very short read. There's even cute little pictures inside, but I highly recommend this. I think you guys would love this too. Let me try to find a good quote for you guys, maybe one that describes what Huga is. So it says, Good food, candles, fireplaces, and blankets are constant companions for Huga. In a way, Huga is all about oxytocin. Could it be that simple? 
Perhaps it is not a coincidence that everything that has to do with Huga makes us feel happy, calm, and safe. So it's really cute. It's just basically like what we would call feeling cozy. Do you know when you have those really cozy vibes at home? Well, they have a word for it and they really practice it all the time. And I truly believe that we can take a page out of that book. And I think that this would be a great uplifting read for January. And now because I feel like doing so, I'm going to include a little bonus book as well because this was a short story. I don't often read short stories, but this really helps you achieve even a reading goal if you guys wanna cheat a little bit and read a book that is super short. I think that this book says it is like 100 pages around there. It's a short story and it's so good. It's part of this series by a bunch of artists came together and it is called the forward collection now my specific favorite i didn't read them all last year because i felt like that would have sort of been cheating and they're just really short but i really love this one so much and this was called summer frost by blake crouch who is honestly one of my favorite authors dark matter and recursion are two books by blake crouch that i absolutely love so i definitely recommend if you want a taste of his writing style even though this book was a little bit different i would definitely recommend a summer frost by blake crouch it was such a good read so short, so easy to get into, so addictive, very suspenseful, and oh my gosh, it was just so good. So basically, I'll read you what this is about so that I can do you justice here. <laughs> it says, a video game developer becomes obsessed with a willful character in her new project in a mind-bending exploration of what it means to be human. But the New York Times best-selling author of Recursion, loved Recursion, but I think I love Dark Matter even more such a good book. So basically it sort of is like a AI sort of world. It is a dystopian society, if you will. Things get really complicated and it sort of explores the realms of AI. And I'm so interested in that. I love to know where technology is going to go, where we could end up, all the realms, realms of possibility in life. This was just such a fascinating read. And it honestly is as good as it is short. It's so short, so good, so gripping. And like I said, I've been a huge fan of this author. So I highly recommend those books, specifically this one. And I honestly wish that it was a little bit longer because I really love the story. It was just so captivating. So this book sort of reminded me of a mix between her, one of my all time favorite films, mixed with Ex Machina and like a future episode of Black Mirror, if you will. It was very like in that realm. So if you enjoyed any of those movies or shows, I guarantee you, you guys will like this book. So here's a good quote. There is no such thing as real taste or real smell or even real sight because there is no true definition of real. There is only information viewed subjectively, which is allowed by consciousness, human or AI. In the end, all we have is math. If you guys have never really dabbled with short stories or anything like that, I think this would be a really good start. And if you love this kind of dystopian futuristic society, if you like the idea of AIs, if you're a fan of those movies, like I said, or Black Mirror, I think you'll really love this book. So check it out. And then you can also check out the Forward Collection by Blake Crouch and a few other authors as well. So guys, that's it. Those are my five favorite books that I read last year in 2020, my top five favorites. I gave them all four or five stars, which is a really generous review on Goodreads. If you guys don't have Goodreads, I highly recommend getting it. Like I said, I'm not sponsored in any means, but it is a good time to set a reading goal for yourself because we are in January, we are in the new year, and just reading is the perfect escape especially in this the times that we're living in really. So I hope you enjoyed this little mini favorites of mine, my top five favorite books of 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I would love to know, I asked this question on Instagram, but if you don't follow me there or if you didn't participate, I would love to know two questions. What was the best book you read last year in 2020? And what is your favorite book of all time? Please inspire me because I am taking what you guys say to heart and I will be researching these books and hopefully reading them going in to 2021. Like I said, I'm going to be setting a 25 book goal for myself in this new year, which is basically two books a month and I think I can do it. So wish me luck guys. But until I see you guys next time, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. It would mean so much to me. Every subscriber just makes me so happy and it keeps me motivated into making more videos like this for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I wish you guys all a safe, happy, and healthy new year. Things might seem like they are stale and they're the same, but believe me, things will be getting better this year. We have to stay positive and also stay reading. It is my favorite form of escapism. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.